back in the shop today. Um, took a couple weeks off from doing some videos. Um, it's been hot out in the shop. Uh, a lot of needed yard work had to be done and stuff. So I'm back in the shop today trying to get a couple videos done. Winter's coming, so I'll be in the shop a lot more. Um, I don't spend much time outside in the winter. So today's video is not going to be a build. I'm going to go through some uh, finishing techniques that I use on my toys. Um, I've used it on furniture um, and other projects. And, and the one I want to start out with is um, putting stain, actually dark stain, over top of uh, painted wood. Now you normally wouldn't put stain over top of paint, but um, the technique I use is uh, pretty cool. Um, basically what it is, is when I, I built a lot of toys over the years and uh, a lot of toys are just a plain wood toys, no color to them. And I love these kind of toys. You don't have to worry about the color, They're all natural. Uh, sometimes I want to add a little color to the toy. Say I want to paint the top red or yellow or something like that. Um, I don't actually like to paint. I mean, it looks all right if you paint the toy. The, the part actually a bright yellow and just leave it like that that looks fine but if you wanna if you don't want it to bright yellow what you can do is actually paint that particular part of the toy the color you want and the colors I use for my toys are mostly the red blue green yellow uh, white the basic colors and say I wanted to do this uh, top yellow and I didn't want it to be real bright what I would do is I would paint it yellow first. And then what you do is you take some sandpaper and you sand some of the paint off. Now, you're gonna sand some of this off so you can see some of the uh, wood through it. Now this is actually Baltic birch. And you're just gonna sand until you get some of the, the wood to show through. You're just going to lighten it up a little bit. In different areas, see different areas that you want that may, that may look like they're worn on a particular toy. And this works nice too if you're doing a toy that's supposed to represent uh, something back in the old days and you want it to look real old. So basically we have some of this paint taken off of this here. So it's not quite as bright as it was before. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some dark stain. Now it doesn't have to be, this is actually a provincial, it's a dark stain. It actually doesn't have to be that. It could be a lighter oak, it could be another darker stain. I've been using provincial um, for these uh, projects. But you're gonna take some provincial, let me get a rag here. And you're gonna actually and my stain is not the greatest here, but we're gonna see if we can get this to work. You're actually gonna put some of the stain on this on your item here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wipe it off. And you're gonna do this on any part that you want of your toy to be colored, but you don't want it to be real bright or if you want it to look antique and old. So there you have the color. Now, this is what it started out to be, and that's the color it's gonna be on your toy. So it kinda, you still have the color, but it looks old, worn down, uh, rustic looking. So it's not the bright yellow. But there's nothing wrong with painting bright toys. I just said I use this on a lot of my toys that I want to look old or antique. So And it works on experiment on different colors. You can do it on uh, red. Now I got uh, several. Here's a, here's a toy I made. And this is actually a covered wagon from Steve Good. Now uh, this is, it's got four different colors to it. There's the yellow. This wheel is yellow, but this is the bright yellow. 
that's on the same exact type of wood. It's just that I made it look old on this wagon. Now, also, here's a red wheel, which this is the same wood. It's red, but I put that stain over the top. I, first, I sanded it and put that on the top. And then the same thing here with the blue. I did the, the made the blue look kind of old and rustic looking. Instead of having it bright blue, I think it looks a lot nicer. Being that this covered wagon is from the 1800s, you want it to look old. And here's a, a green, and then I did the sides too. But it just looks old and antique and rustic. And there it shows around the wagon. I got different colors. So it actually looks pretty nice when you put the stain over the top. Now, it will matter. I showed you on Baltic birch. It might be a little different on pine. Um, it works good on light woods like Baltic birch, pine, uh, maple, uh, aspen. Uh, you want to try. You want to try first before you wreck your toy on different types of wood. But it's just a nice way to uh, add color to your toys. But you don't have the bright, bright color on the toy itself. Another technique I use is I will take. Um, a, a toy and here is here is a toy car and I added the red fenders on it now these fenders were painted bright red just like here now this is actually pine but this these were painted bright red and what I did to get that color like this that, that you can see it's kind of dimmished around that old color rustic looking what I did you just paint it and then you take a torch, a propane torch like this here, and you take, after you paint it, you take a torch and you burn that, burn that paint just a little bit. Add a little uh, flame to it and burn it just a little bit. And then you'll uh, wipe it and then it'll look just like this here. And I would probably do that before you actually glue it on the toy. Um, that would be one way to do it. Or you could do it after it's all on too. Um, I did that to, this is a red one, actually, here's a green one. Now the green one, I don't know if you can see it, it's hard to see, but you can see that the blue tint that's in here when you um, burn that green, it actually turns a little blue. I don't know if you can see that, but it actually gives a little nice uh, color to that green. Uh, another thing you can do is if you... Paint your whole toy. Here is a, a little grater I made, and I paint. This is pine, and I painted it solid yellow. It's all yellow. Now I like this. I like them like this. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but then I did some experimenting. So what I did was took uh, another toy, which was all painted yellow. That was just like this here, like this toy here. But I took the torch over the top of that yellow, and created that that look. Of that tractor with the different uh, colors in it with the torch. So that actually um, made the tractor look kind of worn or old. So here is a, is a new one. Say this would be a new grader and this is the old worn out tractor. And all I did was take that propane torch and tor torch over the um, paint. Um, something you probably wouldn't normally do to a, a real nice toy is take a torch to it. But... Um, uh, I experiment on all kinds of different finishes and way to make look, toys look. So, and then I also did it on um, red. Here's a little fence I made. And we had that painted solid red. And we took a torch to it. And that kind of gave it that little uh, rustic look there. Uh, weathered look of the fence. So that turned out really nice. Instead of having actually a solid red fence, we just took the torch and did a little burning on it. Um, another way I did a finish is, and this is actually by mistake, one day we were doing a, a project and uh, we had bought some stain. Um, we had bought some of this, um, this is actually uh, gun stock. It's semi-transparent gun stock. And I thought, well, that might look pretty nice on the toy. So what we did was um, 
we put it on a toy and I said boy that that doesn't even look good I didn't like the color at all and I'll put some on I'll put some on a piece of wood here and I'll show you we actually um, took some of this gun stock We actually put some of this uh, gun stock on this here. And after we had it on, I said, boy, that, that doesn't look very good. I didn't like the looks of that. I mean, some somebody might, but I didn't like the looks of that for the particular toy I was making. So I had a can of this uh, provincial dark stain, and I said, well, let's just quick put some of that on it and, and, and cover it up. So what we did was we took some provincial stain. Not a lot. And we rubbed some dark stain on it. And actually toned it down just a little bit. I don't know if that's exact. That's a little lighter. We could probably put a little a dad more on it, maybe. But we just went over the top of this. With that provincial. And that actually uh, did a pretty nice color for a toy. Now this is actually a toy I did, which is basically the same thing. We did the two-tone. We put uh, transparent gun stock on it, and then we put the, the uh, provincial over the top and came up with this color. So if you would take a piece and just put gun stock on it, This is the difference. This is what the, this is the difference you get. I particularly don't like this color, but this is the color you get after you put the gun stock on it. Now, if you go, I don't have a. If I take another piece of scrap wood and just put provincial on it, and this is all Baltic birch wood. It's going to differ. Depends on the. The wood that you use. Just experiment before you uh, try. Now this is this is the three different types right here. You can see this is just the provincial, this is just the gun stock, and this right here is both of them together. And I actually like this color the best for for um, the toy I was making. So ex you can experiment with different types of stain um, to try to get some different colors. Uh, and then, like I say, it's going to make a difference, too, on the, the wood you put it on. If you put it on maple, it might be a little different. You put it on pine, it might be a little different. Um, aspen, uh, that's kind of iffy. I don't know if I haven't did a lot with aspen as far as the staining part goes, but... You could try it, but them are the different techniques I use for um, um, finishing some of my toys. Works pretty nice, um, but just make sure that you experiment before you actually try it on your project because you don't want to spend all the time building something and uh, wreck it by trying to do a different type of finish. So um, I think that pretty much covers the video for today. Um, oh, one more thing. I build a lot of toys and I've been to a lot of shows and what happens over time, you sit at shows and I don't know if uh, a lot of you uh, have done this, but the, the, the toy will sit out in the sun, out on the table, you'll be at a show all day long and over time your toy gets uh, messed up, sun, sun damage is a big thing with wood, it'll turn different uh, a color with sun damage. and so what I do, if I, I go through my toys, if I see something, now this toy is actually uh, pretty nice shape. But I'm going to show you what I do if I run across a toy that
just doesn't look the greatest and I just want to make it look new again. So what I'll do is I'll take the toy and I'm just going to burn it with the torch. I'm just going to pour over that toy, that torch, and just give it a little, little bit of a burn. Just make it look like an old engine. Now all that yellow, the yellow from the sun damage is pretty much uh, gone um, from the toy. And then what you can do after you have that done, what you can do is just take a, what I do is take a clear spray and you'll see how nice that turns out. with that um, done with the clear spray that really brings out that color in that toy. Now that'll clean that toy up really nice and you won't have the um, you won't have the damage of the the sun and that'll make a really nice toy for it. So them are basically the um, techniques I got for um, finishing my toys. Um, there's probably more, but I can't think of them right now, but that's basically the techniques I use for finishing a lot of my toys. Um, so if you like this video, uh, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and uh, make some comments down below. If you have any questions, I'll get back to you. So until then, um, work safe. <laughs>